The Rivian R2 is one of those rare vehicles where the deeper you look, the more fascinating the story becomes. It started as an ambitious idea, a rugged mid-size EV priced at just $45,000, designed to bring Rivian's outdoorsy identity into a much more accessible market. When it was announced, many people saw it as the most exciting new EV since the Model Y. But now, more than a year later, the picture has changed. Some features have been cut, others have been refined, and the engineering progress behind the scenes suggests Rivian is pushing harder and faster than anyone expected. And buried within this progress are subtle but significant clues that Rivian may be preparing a major leap in self-driving capability. When the R2 was first revealed, one feature that grabbed a lot of attention was the fold-flat front seats. It was a clever idea that instantly made the R2 attractive for camping and road trips. You could imagine parking somewhere with a view, flattening the seats, stretching out, and making the most of the compact footprint, but that feature is no longer happening. Rivian made the tough decision to remove it, likely to reduce cost, complexity, and structural challenges. For tall people or anyone who wanted a mini camper vibe, it's a disappointing change, but Rivian clearly had to prioritize more essential components. Another shift came with the charging port. Originally, Rivian positioned a slim port on the back right, designed for sidewalk charging and urban convenience. But after hearing feedback from reservation holders and current Rivian owners, Rivian moved it to the back left and increased its size. This might seem like a small detail, but it's a very practical improvement. The new placement makes the R2 far more compatible with CCS2 in Europe, and it makes using Tesla Supercharger V3 stalls much more convenient. Instead of awkward cable stretches or poor positioning, R2 owners will find everyday charging easier and more natural. Rivian also removed the rear accessory ports that were meant for special Rivian-designed add-ons like a camp kitchen or a custom bike rack. It was a cool concept, but ultimately it introduced more complexity and higher costs. Instead, the R2 will offer a standard receiver hitch, which is arguably the more sensible choice. After all, there's already a massive market of hitch accessories that work perfectly well. Rivian seems to be acknowledging that practicality, affordability, and simplicity are the priorities for the R2. Even with these cuts, the features that matter most to everyday drivers are still in place, and some of them are genuinely exciting. The biggest win is that the R2 still starts at $45,000. In today's EV market, where prices have been creeping upward, Rivian holding that price point is a bold move. It positions the R2 as a direct competitor to the Model Y, but with a personality that stands out. At that price, the R2 will likely come with a single rear motor, but dual motor and tri-motor configurations will also be available for more performance and capability. The R2 is expected to offer multiple battery sizes, including a long range option that should comfortably exceed 300 miles of real world range. Behind the scenes, Rivian is moving to a new 4695 structural battery pack design with up to 768 cells sourced from LG Energy Solutions' new Arizona facility. This supply chain shift is important because domestic production helps Rivian reduce the risk of tariffs and maintain a steady flow of materials. Inside the car, Rivian is introducing something deceptively simple, an oversized haptic scroll wheel on the steering wheel. It might not sound revolutionary, but Rivian has a history of turning small details into truly meaningful user experiences. Early impressions suggest this scroll wheel could bring a level of tactile control that feels intuitive and futuristic at the same time, the kind of feature you only need to use once to realize every other car will eventually copy it. The R2 also keeps the front trunk, or frunk, which remains a hugely useful piece of storage. It may have a manual latch instead of a powered one, but the utility is there, and many EV owners consider the frunk essential for road trips, gear, and daily storage. The motor configurations are also intact. You'll get the option for a single motor version, a balanced dual motor setup, and a high performance tri motor version that Rivian says will do 0 to 60 in well under 3 seconds. That's supercar level acceleration in a compact SUV priced far below traditional performance vehicles. Where things get even more interesting is Rivian's production progress. Over the past several months, Rivian has been showing real evidence of development, not just concepts or renderings. 
they've revealed the high-pressure die castings that form major structural sections of the vehicle. They've shown fully built R2 bodies, at least 16 so far, which confirms that Rivian's casting and assembly processes are working at functional scale. They've also unveiled the high-voltage treehouse, an essential component that integrates major electrical and powertrain systems. The battery pack with all 768 structural cells is complete as well, and Rivian has even shown the E-code process, a critical corrosion protection step that signals actual pre-production activity. Each of these updates shows that Rivian isn't theorizing about the R2, they're building it. There's also growing speculation about a possible R2 launch edition. Rivian used this strategy with the R1T and R1S, offering exclusive colors and packaging for early buyers. RJ Skiringi recently hinted that the R2 might get something similar, possibly a launch green color inspired by the R1 program. If Rivian follows the same pattern, early buyers might see unique trim options, badges, or bundled accessories that make the launch edition a standout configuration. But the most intriguing part of the R2 story revolves around autonomy. Rivian has never overpromised here. They don't throw around big claims. They don't talk about full self-driving. But when you combine their careful wording, subtle design choices, and some insider comments, the autonomy picture becomes much more compelling. One detail in particular sparked curiosity. In one of the R2's e-coat images, there's a noticeable gap in the front sensor cluster, a gap that doesn't exist on the current R1T or R1S. That gap could be for a new sensor, possibly even LiDAR. Back in 2024, one of the Rivian core designers mentioned that a place for LiDAR was part of the design brief, which makes this discovery even more meaningful. And then there's the compute side. Today's Rivian vehicles use NVIDIA Orin, which delivers around 254 trillion operations per second of compute power. That's good, very good, and roughly 10 times the power of Rivian's previous hardware. But NVIDIA has a newer platform called NVIDIA Thor, which begins rolling out in 2025. Thor isn't just an incremental upgrade. It jumps from 254 trillion operations per second to 2,000 trillion operations per second. And the real story is that Thor offers up to 60 times the neural network performance of Orin, which is the type of compute that matters most for self-driving. When you pair the possibility of new sensor locations with a massive leap in compute hardware, Rivian's cautious public language starts to make sense. They've hinted at eyes-off autonomy for future vehicles, but with a very restricted operating domain. They've acknowledged advanced autonomy work, even as they avoid calling it full self-driving. It's possible that Rivian is building towards a platform that brings them far beyond lane-keeping and adaptive crews, something capable of handling more complex driving tasks with comfort and confidence. Put all the clues together, the sensor gap, the design brief, the next-generation compute platform, and the early autonomy features on current vehicles, and it becomes clear that Rivian's long-term autonomy strategy is more ambitious than what they've publicly shared. When you zoom out, the R2 becomes more than just a $45,000 electric SUV. It's Rivian's gateway to mass market scale, a showcase of next-generation manufacturing, a testbed for new battery architecture, and possibly the launch platform for Rivian's next leap in autonomy. While a few early ideas had to be cut, the underlying vision feels stronger, clearer, and more focused than ever. And as the engineering milestones stack up faster and faster, it's becoming obvious that the R2 isn't simply another affordable EV. It's a strategic cornerstone for Rivian's future. The R2 is shaping up to be one of the most important electric vehicles of the decade, and we're still only seeing a glimpse of what it might eventually become.